In this fifth episode of Project Springtime, and I'll explain why I say the fifth at the end of this episode, but I wanted to cover frequency, the frequency of the Eucharistic conferences that we're hosting in our parishes. So just to dig right into it, once a month seems to be the sweet spot. Any more than that, twice a month, or if you did it every single week, I think it'd become very, very taxing for those helping to facilitate your captains. Once a month seems also to be enough for your audience to really feel like they're a part of it, engaged in it, something that they can look forward to and just build that community um, successfully. I don't really have an experience doing it on a less frequent basis than once a month, um, so it may be possible, but I don't know. And then as far as audience, so who is it geared towards? Uh, kind of the target is high schoolers and then young adults, but we'll start with high schoolers. So for high schoolers who have the opportunity to go to a Steubenville conference or one of their branches throughout the country, they have an opportunity in the summer to have a very impactful encounter with Christ. Now, I think we mentioned this before, the difficulty is that when they go back home, all of a sudden they lose that support system and they don't have a way to pray and uh, encounter Christ in that way. And so that's really what we're trying to do. So what does that mean for Project Springtime is maybe we align our conferences that we host with the school year. So begin end of August or uh, September if you're going with the elementary school, high school um, calendar. And then end, uh, end of May or end of June to align it with, um, again, the school year. That gives the opportunity during the summer to take a break, which is not something that um, our teams have experienced because we've always uh, pushed through the summer. Uh, we always looked forward to having one outside, which is still something that I think is worth considering. Maybe that could be done in September. September is a perfect month because August, oftentimes there are big storms that'll just come out of the blue because of the summer heat and sun. So September, things start to cool down. It's good jacket weather. Um, it might be a good bet. Uh, but again, so you have three, four, maybe five months during the summer where you get to just sit back and look forward to the coming school year and, and hosting these youth conferences. I think that's, um, if I were to begin again, or begin a new one, I think that's the way I would approach it and schedule it. Now, uh, looking at young adults. So I wanted to explain to you and share with you, uh, preach Christ. And one of the initial hopes with these Eucharistic conferences was, um, you know, young adults are, look for these types of experiences. Uh, something that's not just, and I want to be careful saying that, but not just the Mass, but something they can really engage in and feel like they're a part of a community. Um, maybe um, hear a message that is catered more particularly to their age group, so um, maybe even challenging. And that's why sometimes I mention fire and brimstone from uh, just as a way for your speaker to approach their talk. Something that really strikes a chord in them. Um, so Preach Christ was an initiative that I began in 2017. And for three years, I wanted to experience it myself. And then the next year, next three years, um, had the opportunity to implement it at St. Gregory the Great Parish on an actual community level. So what is it? It is a, a way to focus and root your identity in Christ. Again, um, Eucharistic conferences, all we've been talking about is identity. Uh, Project Springtime is very much in line with Fatima, and so there's that whole spirituality. But even more fundamental than that is our identity in Christ. So many times, uh, society, the world, pushes identities on our young adults, whether we're talking about the LGD, LGBTQ, or even if we're talking about a completely different plane, just uh, where am I gonna go to college 
and what am I going to major in and what am I going to do for the rest of my life? These can be very high pressure types of questions and, and it can be easy to form your identity completely on that. And that's not to say that's bad to be thinking about those things and pursuing those different secular vocations, but to be able to stand back and then actually focus on what does it mean to live as a Christian, uh, to be anointed, an anointed son and daughter or daughter of the Father. Uh, you know, they're going to be able to carry that with them wherever they go. It's a three-year program because every single year focuses on a different kerygma, central message of the faith, incarnation, crucifixion, and resurrection. And uh, there's a t-shirt that goes along with it, which on the front says, Preach Christ. Very, very bold. And that's a conversation starter so that wherever you go, um, honestly, the hardest part about sharing Christ with others or trying to evangelize is just breaking the ice. And so the t-shirt breaks the ice for you. Um, and then on the back is where you have those three different kerygmas. How does it look during the summer? It's an eight-week, eight-session program, which is honestly very charismatic. So kind of like the early church, uh, who had um, identities based on cities. So like you had the church of Corinth, you had the church of, um, oh, you know, whatever it might be. Well, here in this case, we have Preach Christ Williamsville, which if I pull up the app, so let me actually screen record here, three, two, one. So the app, right now it's live as of February 14th, 2022. It's actually a, a website, preachchrist.usa.org. I'll put it right over here so you can see what I'm doing. So we have PC, Preach Christ. I'm gonna open that up, and you'll see that as I open it, come on. Uh, well, there it is. It's con in conjunction with GroupMe, which is a social platform, and so you're able to really easily create a group. The idea is throughout the country, USA, Preach Christ USA. Um, so I'm going to click Williamsville, New York, USA, and you'll see that it opens up the group me. And so that's how I'm able to communicate with the different members. So going back to the app, if I go to the home screen, you'll see that um, you can tap to join a group me. You can create the PC app, which is really just a shortcut on your phone. That's how it exists at the moment. Tap to learn with scripture, which sends you to Alexio and how to pray with scripture. You have the Kerygma, the three themes throughout the year, and then eight summer sessions. So let's open the eight summer sessions. Um, the first one is how to pray with scripture, the three by six method. Next one is anointing. What does it mean? Uh, where does the theme of anointing come from in the Bible? Then you have kerygma. So um, uh, we talked about that already. And every single one, here is witness, um, it shows you how to facilitate the group in that particular session. Members take seven minutes of personal time to prepare a witness. Girls and guys separate groups and practice giving their witnesses to each other. Members organize into co-ed groups of three or four and give their witness again. Suggested passage. 1 Peter 3.15. So that's what you would pray through during this particular session. Um, so there are YouTube videos that go along with it, which explain it a little bit more in detail, but that would be watched just on a more personal basis. So there's a lot to this app. It's just kind of a way to organize um, kind of this project. So point being, um, Project Springtime, Eucharistic Conference, uh, one of the ideas was that it's kind of like what St. Louis de Montfort did with his parish missions. He would go to a particular parish, spend time there, physically rebuild the church, but also rebuild the community, uh, preaching a message which was Christ-centered, but very Marian. He would use Mary as a lure to kind of reel in people and draw people to Christ. Um, so, uh, but at the end of his parish mission, he would erect a cross. And then he would move on. And so he kind of did this throughout France. And so the idea with um, Project Springtime or doing a Eucharistic conference is it could be a three-year thing. And then just as a leader yourself, um, I don't exactly want to tell you how to do it, but 
uh, I will tell you how I approach it, is that three years, you're able to really um, build the community um, and, uh, and then possibly move on. And then just like in the New Testament, where the Pharisees, uh, where one of them says, you know, if it's of God, it will continue. If it's not of God, it will not. You know, I think that's important to be able to step into something, but then also to be able to step away and let others people rise to the occasion. So that can be an approach that you take as a leader. Um, maybe rising up to the role of leadership uh, and then maybe not even going somewhere else to start a new one, but then just stepping down and allowing someone else to rise up. So that can be something to keep in the back of your mind. Uh, but in conjunction with Preach Christ, you're forming these very intentional, almost modern apostles. And how much in line and how cool is that, that uh, uh, just going in line with the whole Project Springtime Initiative, um, forming a modern apostles. Um, so I, I guess I'm starting to go in circles here. I've pretty much said what I needed to say. Um, so Project Springtime is also a, an album, a music album. And uh, I was able to successfully print 3,000 of them. The music is also available digitally, whether it's on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever music is sold or listened to, streamed. Um, but then these 3,000 are things that I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to give away. Um, one of the things I think is it'd be a really great fundraiser for World Youth Day, and so that's what I have in the back of my mind. 